Welcome to the Tom's River Show. Pat O'Melia here. You're a concerned Tom's River resident. Why I do this show was you're concerned. And you've expressed that concern. I appreciate that. Before we get into what concerns us, don't forget our website, the HMG TV shows, which I had to work on over this weekend with GoDaddy. You know, we used to have Pat shows, which was kind of quaint, but as the, the studios grew, you know, a website with my name and it didn't, didn't sound business enough, professional enough. So we went HMG TV shows. And they had to do this migration of our Shore Show and our New Jersey at Large website. and yeah, Didn't go smoothly. But we got it done over the weekend. Like 400 bucks later, we got it done over the weekend. So please, go to the website. Uh, you can tweet me. You see all the stuff on the bottom of the screen. Download the live stream app. You can enjoy all our programming. We got some new stuff coming up. We're getting some new shows coming up. Uh... Gonna have to be Hudson County ish. There's a lot goes on in Hudson County. It's hard to get people to do things in Tom River and Seaside Heights. You know, they, they got their own little hamlet, you know what I mean? Um, a lot of law enforcement stuff we're doing in Jersey City and North Bergen and the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office. Not so much down here, but we're working on that. New Jersey Transit. The governor continues to pour millions of dollars into New Jersey Transit. Here's the problem with New Jersey Transit and mass transit in general in New Jersey, which we don't have much mass transit in general, we have New Jersey Transit. New Jersey Transit's main problem is the government of New Jersey. It is so intertwined with the state and government and politics is why it doesn't operate efficiently. It is why it is, needs to be so heavily subsidized. And those subsidies are what ran out private industry, the private bus companies. You know, there were private bus companies, private train companies. You know, they, these, these actually existed at one time. More in particular, buses. There were tons of private buses. Now, Tom's River Show, of course, but we're all from Jersey City originally. If you remember Jersey City, we had buses for everything. You had the Burger Avenue bus, the Central Avenue bus, the Garfield Avenue bus, the Boulevard bus, the Montgomery Street bus. There were buses for every street. And we took, and they were predominantly privately owned. Now, we just lost another privately owned bus service in Jersey City. Now we're trying to figure out what to do. The problem is the subsidies. New Jersey Transit is so subsidized that, you know, it's losing money. And it, the private companies can't compete because of how heavily subsidized New Jersey Transit is. And I'll give you an example of that. The New York ferry system. They just did a, the concerned citizen groups there in the controller's office just released numbers. To take the ferry in New York City, it's $2.75. Great price, right? It is subsidized almost $11 per ride. So you're, you're taking the ferry out to New York, you're paying your $2.75. The rest of everybody else, whether you know, you're know you driving it, you have that congestion pricing coming in, uh, whether you take that ferry or not, you're paying part of that. Again, the ferry service is, is subsidized. $11 a rider. People getting on the ferry pay two seventy five. dollars If a transit system can't at least come close to breaking even, then it's not worthwhile to run. It might be nice to throw all the buses here or buses there, but none of them are making any money. And the only reason they're operating is because you... Your tax dollars, your property taxes, your fuel taxes, subsidize it. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching the Tom Dribber Show. I'll be right back. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals. That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, magnet award-winning nurses, and accomplished hospital associates, all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. 
visit us on the web at BarnabasHealth.org. We're Tom's River Show. Let me explain how you subsidize it. And, you know, I talked about congestion pricing. That's coming to New Jersey. We'll get into that later on. You know, we put taxes or fees, whatever you want to call them, on parking lots now, the fuel taxes, and all that money goes to mass transit, which we keep shoveling that money in there. And it continues to lose money. There's a ridership problem. You know, if there's not enough ridership, you got to cancel the lines. If it is not at least coming close to breaking even, you got to cancel it. Let's get to local politics in Tom's River. Local politics. All right, you got a three-way dance for the Republican um, line in Tom's River for mayor's race. Again, Mayor Kelleher is not running. Um, probably didn't want to put up the aggravation of running. I think history is going to paint Tom Kelleher well. Well, now you got Mo Hill is in the race. He was going back and forth there. There was a lot of heat on Mo Hill not to run, but he has decided to run. And uh, the problem with Mo, he has no running mates right now. Now, when you come out as you're going to be a candidate, you got to have a ticket. You know, I've done a lot of debates in Jersey City, and we'll do some here uh, in the mayor's race. Maybe a primary. I'm not sure yet, but I know we will when it comes down to Democrat versus Republican. We would have guys who would get into the mayor's race with no ticket just to be in the race and be part of the debates. There were guys like Alpine. You know, Alpine, he, he was, at least he was funny. He was never a serious candidate. And we had one guy, after a while, I put a rule in. Unless you had a full ticket, you were not in the debate. Simple as that. I couldn't have these people just popping up. And we had some people who went to court because I excluded them from debate. Listen, if you're not all in, you don't have the, all the skin in the game, you can't be in the race. Now, Mo Hill, he's announced his candidacy. He's resigned from the Tom's River Republican Club for a few reasons. One, he wasn't crazy about how they handled the vote uh, to give it to Joe Coronado. Um, two, uh, they froze all the campaign funds. They were collecting funds all along for Tom Kelleher. Tom announced, uh, announced he's not going to run. So the idea was, with the Republican group, that they would split these funds up amongst the Republican candidates. Not going to happen. So Mo Hill has announced he is going to run a grassroots campaign. Grassroots means no money. Now, which is probably uh, an example of that, is not having running mates. Whenever you hear the grassroots, that's somebody who has no money and probably doesn't have much of a chance. The sad thing about Mo Hill he probably, of all of them, I like Joe Coronado. He was in his studio when he was the Ocean County prosecutor. Great guy. I don't know Dan uh, Roderick at all. Um, Mo probably was the best candidate. But for whatever reason, the political powers in Ocean County, the Republican side, decided Mo was not the candidate they wanted. And that's going to play in, too. And that person, of course, is George Gilmore. That's going to play into this race. George Gilmore is going to be part of this. Now, Coronado and Roderick don't seem to have money problems, and they have full tickets. So you got to look at these two guys as one and two. Now, the interesting thing is, like I said, bad sign for Mo, no money. Um, good sign for Mo is the TR, Tons River Republican Club, is really split. There's a lot of people who are loyal to Mo Hill, because Mo Hill's been in the trenches. He was a councilman, then he was a councilor at large. He's been in the races. He's dealt with these committee people, you know, they've got to know him over the last, I don't know, probably uh, 20 years, and he's an accomplished man. Dentist, he's a retired admiral from the Navy, pretty good credentials. And again, again, I am not knocking Joe Coronado. Uh, he's well credentialed also. Um, so it's a good sign for Mo that there's a split there, so we may be able to get some help. But if Mo doesn't come up with an actual ticket with running mates, Listen, you're not going to canvas all the Tom's River by yourself. When you got running mates, you got four people out there, you're at large candidates, and you, you're working more as a team, you know, you're covering more ground, you're doing a better job raising funds as four years. Now, George Gilmore, his trial starts this week, and he will loom over the Tom's River mayor's race. And loom he will. Now, I don't know how the decision what the, the final verdict is going to be with Gilmore. He has already suffered some um, judge ruling losses. 
Uh, his hoarding defense has been thrown out. They're not going to let the expert witness to come in and say that George Gilmore suffers from a hoarding disease. Uh, also, his personal expenses have been allowed. I'm going to show how George spent his money. He will loom over this. Now, that's going to be a problem for Joe Coronado because one of the big situations with the Tom's River Club was George Gilmore was still calling shots, and that's how the chairs of these uh, political organizations operate. They're calling shots. That's why they're the chair. But in Joe Coronado's place, he's going to have to deal with the specter of George Gilmore. He's also going to have to deal with the cloud of development. Overdevelopment in Tom's River is an issue. You want to see overdevelopment? Go to Jersey City. Again, I keep pointing out, Jersey City, Tom's River, a lot of similarities. Size difference, of course, a lot of similarities. Um, we've had that situation. Mayor Fulop is um, turning back the faucet on it. He, there's no more abatements. Yeah, you're really going to have to hop through some hoops to get abatements. At one time, we were throwing abatements around. Yeah, abatement, you, abatement, you. It was like an Oprah thing. You get an abatement. You get an abatement. You get an abatement. Nobody's getting abatements now. So overdevelopment, because Joe represented a lot of these developers. Um, Coronado's got, everybody's got a, some issues to deal with. The Dan Roderick guy, he was a Democrat, then he flipped over. He was a Republican, then he flipped a Dem, then he flipped over to a Republican. Uh, Mo Hill's got his issues with no money, grassroots. Uh, you may be able to pull this off. Real long shot now, unless you have some monies and some organization and a ticket. Uh, George, uh, Joe, Joe uh, Coronado's going to have to deal with the specter of Gilmore and the specter of developers. And that can be a problem for Joe. Again, issues in Tom's River, overdevelopment, school, cost of the town, and business proven. You, we have to get involved. I'm trying on Route 37. Everybody has to try to increase the business atmosphere in Tom's River. That creates jobs. The more jobs, the more money coming in. It's all for the good. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching the Tom's River Show. We'll be right back. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage, let us be your good friend. We're back, Tom River Show. Pat O'Melia here. I gotta fix my sleeves. I gotta play with my watch. Take my collar. Take a sip of coffee. Had a problem with the Black and Decker coffee pot again today. Like a third of the time, I got an issue with that. And like it gets clogged up somehow. No, 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 the hole is open. You put the grinds in. You put the water in. It's pretty stupid simple. Now I got a practice Silex one in the North Bergen studio. Now I can kick that thing across the studio and it will still work. Never a problem. This one, yeah, I, I don't know what I got to do. I make sure that basket's in there right, and there's still a problem. My life. Problems with coffee pot bothers me. But we're going to have other problems. There's been a $1 million grant split up amongst the various municipalities in New Jersey, starting in April, for distracted driving. Now, we know the distracted. That's the ones of people who are texting. You see it. I see it. You see the people in the cell phones. See, it would have been different maybe 10 years ago when the, the, the movement was for the small cell phone. I, mean, they, I remember Will Farrell had a, um, a bit with um, Jimmy Fallon where he had like a super small cell phone. But now it's smartphones, so you need the big screen. And these things are getting bigger and bigger, which is good for me. But I'm not, I just got to show to take this out with me. I got like an old style uh, phone receiver that I can plug into my cell phone. You can talk. They're going to crack down on distracted driving. But it's not just. The, um, the cell, the smartphone, and a few other things they're going to throw in there. Uh, of course, if you're, here's, here's the reason. Here's what they're sending out to you. Uh, of course, if you're using your cell phone or your smartphone, you're making calls, you're texting, or whatever you're doing, they're going to get a ticket for that. If you are eating or drinking in your car, you will get a ticket for that. So you're cruising along. You got your coffee. You went to McDonald's. You went to uh, Babe's. You went to uh, Wawa. You went to uh, Quick Check, whatever. And you got your coffee. You drink it, ticket. Uh, you're talking to passengers in your car. 
it's, it's a serious stuff here. This is one of the reasons they will pull you over. If you're talking to passengers in your car, you will get a ticket. Now, I, I don't know if it's uh, there. If the passengers are all talking amongst themselves, you get a ticket because you're not controlling this. I will assume if you are singing with the radio, well, now you get a good Beatles song on there or whatever, you get a ticket. If you are grooming yourself, now this is probably more towards the women. I don't know how many guys are going around grooming themselves. Well, you know, it's a different world now. You know, I'm not grooming myself. I did get a haircut recently. When you're losing your hair, you're not in a real rush to get a haircut. Um, so you're grooming, you're putting your makeup on, you're driving along, ticket. If you're reading as you're driving, and this includes maps, you know, I don't know where the map anymore. I remember when I pumped gas uh, at SO and Exxon, we had maps all over the place. People were on a map in New Jersey, map in Connecticut. Man, the people actually opened These things were like four foot by eight foot, these maps. And you had to study them, find out where you're going. But now you got GPS. Uh, if you're reading, um, and including maps, that's exactly what it says. I'm assuming you're not reading books as you're driving. Uh, if you're using your navigation system, yes, your GPS. If you're listening to the instructions or you're looking at the little arrows, ticket. You can't do that. If you're watching, all right, listen, if you're watching a video, I'd give you the ticket then. Adjusting the radio. You want to turn stations? No, you can't turn the station. You have to listen to that station until you come to a damn red light. Then, that, and maybe then, I'm not sure. See, the only time I really touch my smartphone, and people text me all the time, the only time I'll reply if I'm at a red light. I'm not driving along texting you. That's not going to happen. I'll tell people, you know, I'm sorry I didn't get back to you in the last hour. I was on a turnpike. There are no red light. You should be allowed when you're stuck in traffic to do it. But uh, Adjusting your radio, your CD player, or your MP3 player, ticket. So let's, let's, re let's go back over this again. Using your cell phone or smartphone, we all know that. We all see the people doing it. And we've all been guilty of taking a phone call. Eating and drinking, uh, I got a problem with that. If you, can, you can't drink your coffee now. Talking to your passengers. Uh, all right, okay. The grooming, okay, I'll go with that, I guess. Uh, reading a map as you drive, okay. Using a navigation system, I don't go with that. Watching a video, I agree. Adjusting your radio is ridiculous. Now, there is so much tech in these cars today. I was just, I just started, I got a 64 Dodge Polaro. I just started that up over the weekend. It's an amazing car. Then, boom. Didn't start in three weeks. Boom. There is zero tech in there. Yeah, you know, manual brakes, roll up windows. The only power, is power steering. That's it. There is no tech at all. And AM radio, that still works. But the other cars, you know, these things are tech full. Now, listen. I don't know who's at fault. If you have the tech in the car, is the car manufacturer at fault? If I get a ticket because I look down at my dashboard, is that I get a ticket for that? You know, they these new cars have sensors for everything. Lane change sensors, lane warning, brake warning sensors, lane alert sensors, of course your GPS. Are these all illegal now? You can't use the tech you have in these cars or you'll get a ticket? Should I be driving with blinders on because I can't talk to anybody? Now, some guys are going to say, well, I can't talk to my wife. And they say, listen. Can't talk to you. I'm driving. But the problem is you still have to listen to your wife because I don't think the other people in the car are under the same mandate, no talking. Coffee, listening to the radio, has been a staple of driving since they put radios and they came up with cups that you can drive with. Now, we didn't have cup holders in the 40s, in the uh, 50s, and the 60s. And pop up until around the 70s. You now, if you recall, like my 64 Dodge, if I open the glove compartment, the door had two indentations. That's where you put cups or sodas when you were at the car hop. You weren't driving around with your glove compartment door open. It was just an indentation. It wasn't like a, the cup holder. Radio and coffee have been together synonymous for since the 40s when the two radios came out. Yeah. I agree, if they see you on a cell phone or you're texting, you should get a ticket. But, you know, if you're singing to the, you know, first off, I don't even know what I look down for. But, you know, I, I, I think the Lincoln, I can change 
the station on the uh, the steering wheel. But uh, you know, just limit it to the smartphones. Now I'm singing with the radio. I got a problem. Come on, gonna break for commercial. You're watching the Tom's River Show. I'll be right back. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down. That's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lyndhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or a quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. I'm back. You missed me, didn't you? Pat O'Mill, you here? You concerned Tom's River resident dip? Oh, by the way, Tom's River got Zippo for this. I should have stated that. When you're driving around Tom's River, I guess you can text and turn the stations on the radio all you want because they didn't get the $500,500 uh, $5, grant. Tom, uh, Seaside Heights did. So they'll get you in Seaside Heights. Jersey City got the same amount of money as Seaside Heights, $5,500, $5, which in Jersey City will last about a day. So I don't know how much enforcement we'll be doing on that. But be careful. They'll be looking for you, especially the small towns. As I mentioned before, congestion pricing is coming to New York City. Um, and I guess it's going to have easy pass readers. You're figuring out exactly how to charge you. They're going to get into your pocket if you drive into New York. I, I'm sad for you if you drive into New York. For years, I drove tractor trailers over at night. As I started the radio and television, sponsors were tough to get. So when I was at radio, the, <laughs> to pay for it, you know, until I got some more advertised, I used to drive tractor trailers at night, and I would deliver for Bed Bath & Beyond. And I'd go over to uh, Ninth Avenue, and 58th Street and make deliveries. 9th Avenue was okay. There was a lot of room. This over 58th or 59th? Maybe a 61st Street. It was nearby Dangerfields. It wasn't too far from Rodney Dangerfields Club. Club. On the one, whether it was 58th or 61st Street, whatever it was, if you couldn't back in a trail, you couldn't make a delivery there. It was almost like a pool shot trying to back in a trail. There were obstacles all over the place on his road. There was the uh, the women of the Revolutionary War had a huge awning across the street. There was this plywood shack. If you hit it, it would fall over. There were cars parked here, fire hydrants. Uh, when I got the job, you know, they, they, they give you a driver's test to become a tractor trailer driver. And the first thing they had me do was back a trailer in. I got more miles backing up than I do going forward from all my years repairing tractor trailers. You step back, I'm in the shop. So this guy says, all right, can you, uh, he's not even really paying attention to me. He's in the passenger seat. Let me see you back this trailer in. And I backed it right in. And on the blind side, by the way. And the guy was like amazed. He goes, uh, go back in again. So I pulled out another one. This time I, I parked on the, you know, backed in on the, the, the sight side. This guy, you would have, but it was the most exciting thing he ever did. My wife is in the car. This guy actually jumped out of the truck and is running down the yard to his boss. And he must have told his boss, we got to hire this guy. You got to see him back in. Like I said, I got more miles backing up than I do going forward. Hired on the spot. They didn't even take me on the road. He said, this guy can back up like that. He must be able to drive. So that's how I was driving nights. I started like about 10 o'clock at night, and we drove to about 3 in the morning. Bringing bath, bed, and beyond. Um... And that was at night, and it was horrible traffic. 
Terrible traffic all the time. You know, the Russian tea room, they'd have these limos. The whole damn side of the street would be open. They'd still double park. There'd be no car to double park too. But eh, it was what a pain. I pity anybody has to drive. So they're going to charge, and they're talking like some pretty big money. You know, they're, I heard numbers like $130 for a tractor trailer to go into this congestion zone. You know, that money's going to be passed on. You know, the food delivery, Uber, all that's going to get passed on. It's another kind of way to grab money. And they just announced the Verrazano Bridge. It's like $19 to cross the bridge. You know, it wasn't like, you know, we had to borrow money for the bridge. There's fuel taxes, there's all sorts of revenue that's grabbed from to build these bridges. And, you know, it tolls or just part of it. You know, and like I said, this these congestion pricing will be passed along. The reason I bring this up, you can take it to the bank. We'll have it in New Jersey somewhere. Now, there's talk in Jersey City. Oh, we should have congestion pricing. We don't have anything like New York. You know, we keep thinking in Jersey City we're like New York City, but we're not. You know, there's only a few roads in Jersey City that are more than one lane each way. Uh, I don't know where we'd put congestion pricing. But I can see a day when we have congestion pricing on the New Jersey Turnpike or on the Parkway or maybe on a Pulaski Skyway or Route 35 or maybe Route 37. You know, during the peak hours. Well, listen, you're going to drive at the peak hours. You should pay a, a, a big for that. But, you know, you're, you're already paying. You know, you're paying a pretty good toll to get into New York City, a Jersey person. I know um, Governor Murphy was complaining about this. Jersey person going in now, I think... I think it's like $16 to go through the Holland Tunnel. When I started in radio back in the 90s, it was $3 to go through the tunnel. And when I finished in radio on WNJR 1430, I would have stayed in radio, never got into TV. It wasn't for the mayor of Jersey City, the late Lindy Cunningham, and the New York Yankees. The New York Yankees took my time slot. I was on Mondays and Wednesdays at 9 o'clock, and the New York Yankees needed a Spanish uh, radio outlet. So they approached NJR at that time and uh, told NJR, we, we'll give you the Yankee contract, blah, blah, blah. But there was this obstacle there, my show at Monday and Wednesday at 9 o'clock. It was not much of an obstacle. I, I didn't even blame the station. I'm like, you can get the Yankees and, it, and you sacrifice me? I'd sacrifice me. But when I left and I stopped going over, it was $6. This thing has gone up exponentially. I don't know how you can afford it. And rigs, I, I think it's like $44 for a rig to go through. It's amazing on how expensive this has become. And it, it's going to come to New Jersey. You mark my uh, words. Also, they banned plastic bags in uh, New York. And also, they put a five cent, three cents to the state and two cents for the city on brown paper bags. You know the paper bags you've been getting all your life when you went shopping? Now we have to, we have to do it in Jersey, too. We're going to have to pay for that. Route 166, they said it's open. Yeah, kind of open. You better bring a Jeep or a four-wheel drive because you need some major paving down there. But, yes, it is basically open. Not too level, but it is open. And the marijuana weed bill did not make it. It lacked the boats. We kind of talked about that last week. You can take it to the bank. It's gonna, it'll probably come up again in May. Don't do it in May. They're not going to do it until after the election in November. I'm out of time. You've been watching the Tom's River Show. Good night.